Cheers, everybody. Let's get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you drinking? Well, I heard Tim crack open a beer. No, yeah, I'm drinking uh, Jack Daniels apple and Coke. Why the fuck are you making your voice that deep? I don't know. I just it felt weird to be loud when I said it. No, your voice sounds very deep today. Your voice dropped like yeah, an octave. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, that's a full octave. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> no, I'm not. I was drinking. I, I guess when I when I drink whiskey, it it automatically mans me up a little bit. Whoa, what the <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Danny has his new microphone, so he'll sound like uh, Barry White on the podcast. I'm going to do some ASMR for all of you. Mm. What kind of mic did you get? It's one of those uh, snowball ones. Mm. I actually have one that I got before this like leveled up one, but um, I could send that to somebody since it's currently collecting dust. I think Walk is someone that needs one. Yeah, and but then every time I tell him that, he gets all defensive because I think he's using like AirPods or something. Dude, uh, my AirPods uh, are just as good as uh, any mic you'll ever get. I'm talking with AirPods, and when I look, listen to the podcast, I'm like, I sound hot. So I don't yeah, think you, he's using AirPods. Mm, yeah, I mean, I didn't say hot, but I would, I would, I think you sound good on the podcast. God, yeah, but that's my voice. opinion, though. <laughs> he sounds like, I don't know, like he's in the other room. Him and Gary. Gary really needs the upgrade. Mm. But that could just be his voice. All right, 32 days, 13 castaways. Five co-hosts and one podcast. This is Stranded in Tanzania, and I'm your host, Pootie. Today, we're joined by five co-hosts and alumni of Stranded. Hannah and Danny, who originally played in Stranded in Turks and Caicos, season 32. Hey. Uh, Nofo, who originally played in Stranded in Venezuela, season 19. Yay. Nate, who originally played in Stranded in Faroe Island, season 25. Hello. And Lavita, who originally played in Stranded for Victory Season 36. Hello. All right. Uh, today we're going to talk about the new merge. There are 13 people remaining. I think this is going to be a very entertaining merge. Um, we're going to break down each character and their chances uh, of winning. So um, I guess let's get started. Should we, should we go alphabetically or by like fan favorite? Let's go in the fan favorite ranking. All right, let me pull it up. Since that just came but out. That's spoilers. But that's I mean, for this most recent round. It's yeah. going to be more than just the most recent round in the final. You know? Yeah. Let's go reverse fan favorite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, reverse fan favorite order. Talk about the people we don't like. We'll, we'll save the best for last. So let's start with Nick. Nick is currently the lowest on the fan favorite poll of the people still in the game. He He's not even confessionally anymore. Uh, he was pretty entertaining during the twist where he was collecting money and like considering buying the idol for himself and not giving that money back necessarily. But other than that, he's not giving us a whole lot of personality. Yeah. I mean, as we talked about in the last podcast, kind of the running theme of Nick's game is stealing stranded coin, lying about stranded coin. And, you know, at first he was really talking about laying low in his alliance. So getting to the merge and being this low on our fan favorite ranking isn't super surprising since, you know, he's mentioned that it was intentional. I just wish that there was like some other story about him or some ounce of personality being shown in the actual game that people were talking about. Cause right now he's just there and people even in his Alliance kind of forget about him. Not only is he just there, but since he hasn't done any confessionals in three episodes, we don't even know what he's thinking. So we have no idea yeah, he, where his strategy is, who he considers his closest allies, how he's reacting to the merge. Who knows? We don't. Yeah. Plus, he's part of the Douche Bro Alliance, so, you know, he's not giving <laughs> us... Of those Douche Bros, though, he is the most boring right now. I mean, he's not giving us anything. And so he's really falling into game bot territory for me, where he's super strategic and he's definitely involved in the game, but he's not showing any personality behind that. Well, I like him a lot, and I think he's doing great. <laughs> I think he's doing no, I was just saying that. Um, I don't know. Um, you didn't have any thoughts. You just wanted to make that. I like him as a person. Um, he's boring in the game, uh, and that's it. Uh, he's a smart kid. Hannah, this is your buddy. Um, he's a smart kid, and that's all I know about him, and I wish he did more confessionals, because 
I think it has the pen. Sorry, <laughs> slurring my what? words already. Shit. Are you drinking too or no? A little bit, but I don't know. I think he has the potential to be entertaining, but he's just not being entertaining. And maybe we just got to yell at him to do some fucking confessionals because I'm bored. Yeah. My thought about Nick is that like his peak of like potential here as a character in the merge is maybe going to be like whiny brat in like the majority alliance where like when things don't go his way, he's like, uh, no one listens to me. Like that's where I see his trajectory going. If he starts to show more personality, I don't see him being like, you know, fun or bitchy in like a Lauren way or a Missy way. He's just going to be like the one that we laugh at because he's going to be the one that's so out of the loop in his alliance because he's clearly on the bottom of it. I can't be the only one who thinks that. Yeah, definitely the least connected douche bro. My hopes mm-hmm. for him are sort of that he takes advantage of his just sheer amount of stranded coin and goes all in on something last minute and just takes the power to himself. And it backfires, I hope. <laughs> Tim, you are currently planning his next amazing race game. Is he busy ripping off stranded totally and not focus on the game? I think he, he didn't do He hasn't done any legs since Friday. <laughs> what is he? He's just partying this weekend. Maybe he's a new unit. uni student, I think. Uh, okay. Maybe that's it. Um, well, that's all we can really talk about Nick. Cause uh, that's all he's is he getting so. railed, you know, classic freshman year shit. Yeah, he's a uh, part. He's doing. Uh, well, <laughs> he's doing ketamine. I was gonna say. That. I, was like, I'm, I probably sh- shouldn't put that on the podcast. Uh, doing some special K. Yeah, we might Bruce use our NordVPN sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll cut that part out. So, who do we have next? Looks like next on the list Aaron. is Aaron, his douche bro. He's totally bro fine number with two. Uh, oh, he is tied with Nick. Oh, tied for last. That's good. <laughs> um, I think Nick's a lot more int- I mean Aaron's a lot more interesting than Nick though because Aaron is at least giving us uh, a lot of confessionals and I think he's a little bit less secure about his game like I think during that tribal he was super paranoid that it was going to be him and so that kind of leads me to believe Aaron might be the one to break apart from these guys and stir some shit up when uh, his name's on the list yeah it says a lot about this cast that Aaron is this low in the fan favorite ranking, I think. Well, I think he did uh I think he did a couple things to piss people off who are the fans. So <laughs> Well, yeah, but in any other season, he'd be like a douchey strategist that would probably be like middle of the road for fan favorite. So for him to be number, you know, 12 out of 13, like I think that it's Well, if I had voted, he would have been 13. <laughs> <laughs> He's your least favorite. Yeah, um, he just really disappoints me. I just don't think he's interesting at all. And the only thing he has going for him is that he's an asshole in a cast of assholes. So um, I like that he's scared of Lauren. I think that's funny. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that. In a different season, Aaron is king asshole. And we're all rooting for him to be a bit more of an asshole. But just because the second he goes paranoid, we have Lauren... Missy and whoever fighting it's like okay continue fighting Aaron just do whatever yeah I'll be interested to see what happens when like some of our unfortunately hopefully that doesn't happen but some of our A-listers get voted out you know if Aaron then steps up into paranoid douche super mode I think him and Carl have that potential but we'll talk about Carl when we get to him what else can we say about Aaron um I mean game wise I think he's probably safe for a while being him being a target in the early part of the merge, I think he's definitely going to be top 10, maybe top eight, at least until the douche bros have to start really thinking about which people in their alliance they want to take to the end. And I don't think Aaron is going to be somebody that they're going to want to be at the end with them just because he comes off as super strategic and they're going to be like, oh, well, we don't want him to be the one that gets to claim all the moves. I think he's going to be the one cut because they're afraid of him. Whereas I think Nick's going to be the person that just is useless. Yeah. Uh- we have re- referred to this season as like a um, a new Faroe Islands of sorts. And I, I kind of think, Tim, you would know this. The final six of Faroe Islands was kind of the leftover strategists. And that season finished strong because the final six were crazy with strategy after they had booted like Cecilia and uh, Cassandra and some of the, the crazier people in the early merge. 
Yeah. I could kind of see that going this route where Aaron, Carl, and, you know, some of the other under the radar strategists are left at the final six or so. And that's kind of where I see Aaron getting the boot. What do you think? Yeah, I can definitely see Aaron being the... I, I think Aaron is just too paranoid for me. I think he would be... Like, I think he is in a good position, but he would be the one who undermines it. And I think what's with the final seven or so in Pharaoh, where we were the people who just realized how the game was going and just agreed to get rid of all the bigger personalities and threats. Yeah, I also see, you know, if we're looking at last season, Kirill, we had some people that were good players that had a chance to win, uh, specifically Maddie, Randy, some of those guys that really overplayed their hand around final eight or so. And ended up going with a lot of people turning on them. I could totally see Aaron falling into that trap. Yeah, I could see Aaron trying to make some big stand where, you know, he's pretty assertive and abrasive a little bit. Not as much as some of the other people we have on the cast, like Dan. But um, he does, he's going to want something to go a certain way. And when other people don't want that, he's going to get upset. And that could end up um, screwing him over in the long run. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and talk about. The next person on the list, Jack. Jack is he's, he's a super likable guy. Very nice. I don't know if he's necessarily I mean, he's certainly overshadowed by John and Kara in terms of likability. But I don't know. There's not a whole lot to say. What is he doing strategically? Not, do we know? People not keep ignoring much. him like at these tribal councils and at that um the last challenge slash tribal council. He was just like, why is nobody whispering to me? And he kept trying to whisper to people being like, Hey, how are you doing? Talk to me. He's just a really nice guy that keeps on getting ignored. And that's kind of a funny thing. Um, if it wasn't for him so um, saying to everybody, <laughs> he was saying, hi, nice to see you. I hope you're having a good time. I forget exactly what he said to everybody in a whisper. But if he didn't do that, he'd be at the very bottom for me. But he's doing that. And I think it's entertaining. So, yeah, he's kind of our lost puppy dog here. Yeah, so- I love Jack. Um, I think he's super adorable. He has some like really just good, wholesome conversations with people that's completely not about the game. Uh, game wise, I do know he has been working. Well, Dean has been working him more to speak, um, but he is most interested in sticking with his potatoes. <laughs> so John, Cara and Allison. And he's also wants to work with Dean, Tommy and Aaron. That's kind of where he's trying to set himself playing the middle for the long road is where he's, yeah, he's to kind stay. of in like the impossible middle, though, because the yeah. yes. one side is actively targeting his other side. And it's wholly unsurprising to me that sweet, innocent little Jack would much rather work with John and Kara and Allison, who are like the really nice tribe. And they're all just about to be completely I, I don't want to say decimated because they stand a chance they can do some work but they're going to be hard pressed to make it far in this merge because currently everybody else some of them that we don't like some of them that we do have those people in their sights well i think that there's you know there's a pendulum effect in stranded and the game in general and i think jack stands a good chance of you know <laughs> John's going to be a huge target. So, like, let's say John goes and Missy and Lauren are out of the picture at this point. Let's say it's like final eight or something. Kara and John and Jack are going to stand a really good chance of making inroads with other people and lasting past a, pu- a straight up punk gonging. I don't think that that will happen in this season. Uh, I think these players are way too shrewd to let that happen. And I think someone like Jack could really, you know, he already has connections with those other guys. So, it's going to be really easy for them to be like, well, just work with us. And we could really see Jack going deep in the game. And suddenly we're rooting for Jack because he's a leftover from the people that we really loved, you know. But as of right now, we don't know too much from Jack because he's kind of getting the cold shoulder from from everyone. So uh, he let's could wind up in to- that Charlie position from Curl where was kind of non-existent uh, yeah, merge and then say. comes in and now that it's the merge and you know you stand a chance of going deep might start doing a little bit more and could be an active threat here near the end i don't know it all depends on whether or not he starts to put in a little more effort very much charlie. And do more than just i think he's cute Same. yeah of course very much a charlie uh very likable yeah i see that a lot and i loved charlie too could be a threat in the end, but I think ultimately it's going to come down to maybe him not getting his hands dirty enough. That same storyline we saw with Charlie. Mm-hmm. Very similar games. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and talk about someone who's very different from Jack. Dan, who's next in our fan favorite poll. 
I mean, massive asshole. Let's just say oh, that first. He's way too low. Too low. He's <laughs> such a douche that I love him now. Like, he's he's gone so far off the douchebag cliff that I'm now coming back around to liking him. <laughs> he's mean to everybody. Yeah, that's how he's I feel as well. He's mean to us. He's mean to the other contestants. It's just all He's just mean. a miserable prick, you know? <laughs> Maybe he's a Republican. I'm sure he is. He was a cop. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. And I think he's from uh, around these parts because he said he was affected by the hurricane. That being said, I had a... Oh my uh, God, it's AJ. <laughs> yeah. I, I could, it, it, Dan would totally be a libertarian, by the way. Uh, but Dan, I don't understand. I think he's... I think he's playing into it. Like, I think he doesn't quite get it. And this is like his outlet of douchiness. Because I will say... I had a conversation and he was the nicest guy. I really thought he was going to be like a Tommy here. And then he gets in the game. I read his application. I'm like, oh, no, this guy's a douche. And he's in the game. He's a complete douche. So I'm kind of thrown by Dan. I don't know if this is his actual personality or if this is like how he plays a competitive game. What do we think? I think it's the competitive. I'm sure he's a nice person. The, in the, the competitive life. aspect of it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if I say anything mean to anyone I'm referring to you in the game, it's not because I think you're assholes IRL. <laughs> no, it's because I think you're an asshole in real life. I only say mean things that time. I think you're sexist, Nate. <laughs> Sorry. Dan is just, in my opinion, I think that he's one of those people that is really intense when he competes. And this game is full of people who are somewhat illogical. Mm-hmm. You know, we have some people that are not making good decisions, people that are probably just rubbing him the wrong way. And because of that, his douchey side is coming out and it's now hidden in the point where so many people are rubbing him the wrong way that he just is full on douche all the time. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think. But I mean, just in general, he's definitely in the category of uh, Joaquin's, uh, Dan Foldy's, Karen's that we've had in Stranded in the past. That I find extremely entertaining. They're some of our best characters, but they tend to rub people the wrong way. Well, after um, Kelly and Dan, Dan from Island of the Idols, no one should be rubbing up on anyone. So I just want to put. That <laughs> <on the ground. laughs> yeah. Um, Tim and Hannah, we're looking at you. No. I'm just- <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Too big of a distance. Yeah. Speaking of people rubbing up on each other. Um, no. Oh, <laughs> we'll no. save. We'll save Allison and Dean for later in the podcast. Um, <laughs> you know, Dan. I, Dan is a huge douchebag. I, I've even seen people like Dean, Aaron. Uh, they're all kind of targeting Dan now, which is an interesting turn of events considering he's in their alliance. I could see someone. I, it's it's amazing that he's not clashed with Missy and Lauren yet. That's coming, right? Hopefully, well, I mean, the only he's, he's clashed not. with them. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's not clashing with Missy because Missy saved his ass. Yeah, he definitely clashed with Lauren. Here's I can pull some see. of that we're gonna, up. We're going to see a big player like Dan leave. And then immediately after, um, Missy and Lauren, they're going to go. Because this is the point where they where those big characters go. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Nate Curry from like 10th to 8th. Those are when those people are going to go. And then it's going to be the actual good people. And then we're going to end up with like Angelina being a jury goat Mm -hmm. yeah that's usually how it goes i've been surprised though this season you know like i would have thought christian was making the merge and becoming a final three goat i've been surprised consistently in this season and last season um you know we we expect that to happen we expect all of our big characters to get voted out one after another and to be left with the leftovers who are safe I don't know that that's necessarily going to happen this season. I think we'll get kind of like with Curl, where we had interesting, boring, interesting, boring, you know, boots throughout so that the whole season is interesting. I could totally see that happening here. I will say I would love to see Dan in a final tribal council just based on some of his exchanges with Lauren recently, including, ah, fuck you. I'm done entertaining your stupid ass maniacal bullshit. Eat shit. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Either way. What we need to root for is a Dan, Lauren, Missy, final three. Oh, they're all going to be jury. I think we'd have people quit the jury. They wouldn't vote. <laughs> that, that jury. Yeah, I know. This jury will be lit because I think all three of those people are going to be on jury. And typically the jury teams up against the final three. And I would hate to be looking on the other side of those three. But let's move on to the next person on our list. 
Angelina, who I think is a little high. Angelina's been... She's an interesting personality, but she's really not playing the game very hard. Their confessionals yeah, suck. That. Yeah, it's almost like people are playing on her behalf. You know, we have Missy who's goat herding her and some of her tribe. Uh, she's funny in, in person, but it's like she's not around enough and she's not involved enough to really make an impact. I don't think she's taking this as seriously as a lot of the other people in the cast. I think and literally oh, no, anybody else. <laughs> right. So therefore, there's not much to say other than, you know, I do enjoy her, Missy and Lauren kind of teaming up despite their uh, fighting during that public tribal council. <laughs> yeah, that's a smart move. And really, you know, we'll get to Missy, but that's actually a pretty good move for them to team up with all these big personalities. And I, I kind of hope that they stick to that and recognize, you know, Missy's smart enough to recognize that John... Kara and Allison are kind of on the outs and she needs people who are on the outs because she's on the outs. Yeah. And so that would be interesting. Liliana Wonk, so Missy, Lauren, and Angelina could fly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And even before her, you know, bitching, going back to season one of Stranded, of course, Gretchen, some of our great villains. I think Missy, uh, we're going to get to Missy. It's kind of hard to, to talk about Angelina without talking about Missy because that's really all we can talk about is Missy's grandstand to save Angelina, um, which we know is a controversial subject because it kind of extends beyond the game, which is not something we're necessarily comfortable with, but it's what's happening. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I think we messed up canceling Angelina this season. I think we messed up not making them um, conceal their identity more. I mean... I don't think the mess up is that we didn't say, like, you're not allowed to mention where you're from, because that's a little sketchy, in my opinion. Honestly, like, there was always the chance that they're going to wind up on the same tribe. There was always the chance that they were going to delve in too deep and kind of figure each other out. That's just the pain of having two people from a similar place that have a friend in common who is a part of the stranded community, like they're going to be able to suss out that, Hey, if somebody else is from Mississippi, it's probably somebody that knows Mm -hmm. the same person I do. Like that's just, that is the reality of the situation. I don't think we could have, I think heard them. I think that would almost hurt their game more. I think the only thing we could have done is maybe made the swap a little less random, but then, you know, rigging and all that shit, you know? Yeah. I think honestly, I think, In the grand scheme of things, it's going to matter very little. Like, I don't see Missy winning. I don't see Angelina and Missy staying together to the very end. I think they're too big of targets. So, you know, like if Missy goes within the next three councils and then Angelina goes after that, or even if Angelina goes on, it's not going to impact the season that much. What it did impact was that Elizabeth boot, which I think had a ripple effect. So it's just a learning lesson we have to take forward in future seasons of if people have an outside of stranded connection, maybe don't put them in the same season together. Maybe if we do look at the worst case scenario and assume it will happen instead of assuming it's not going to happen. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't think that Angelina really is clued in all that much. I think Angelina is probably just like, oh, whatever, (laughs) you know? Yeah, I don't think Angelina's reading anything into it. I think I think that's all. I think it's Missy. And I think Missy has thrown away her game for this connection that she will regret. Oh, I can't wait to talk about Missy when we get to her. There's a lot to talk about. Um, So let's move ahead to Tommy. Tommy is someone who some of us love. Most of us love. Mm. Novo does not. Tommy, I think, is, you know, I keep I keep referring to him as this. Tommy, uh, forgive me after, but I keep calling him a lovable, a lovable doof. He really is a doof. When I've coined him. He's so nice and so genuine, but he's so gullible and really not clued into like what's really happening he's very surface of this is our tribe i should trust missy in what she says i should believe that she's a woman and (laughs) that she's on her period and i will respect her boundaries like he's very sweet it's super endearing but it's so dumb (laughs) okay i was gonna say even after the fact like now that he knows you know missy gave him a fake idol clue and all that like it's just kind of it's kind of adorable to kind of see him in his confessionals going man i got played in a bad position what do i do and you're like oh it'll be okay tommy you'll figure something out maybe why tommy so mad why tommy so mad (laughs) i just heard nofo exhale nofo take it away 
He is such a he is an adult man. Why are you babying him? He's boring. He's rude. He is just oh my god. He's just pathetic. I don't know why you guys are so on his dick. He's just dull. Hey, t- hi, Tommy. I just want to know. This is just. I just want you to know this is all about you as a character. I'm sure you're nice as a person, but oh my God, you're dull. I, I'll agree with you in terms of dullness. Where I'll disagree is that I think he's a genuinely sweet guy. And I think he's mm-hmm. entertaining to me because of how easily he's doing. Yeah, I think that he's an game. interesting character for, to watch as like a spectator, as like the person who's constantly on like the wrong side of things and has no idea what happened. Like the he's the person who would have like the big brother shock face at every tribal council and every time there's a reveal and it's just like, wow, I had no idea. Like, I can't believe this, you know, and just constantly being outplayed at every step of the way. And I find it interesting. He's to watch. a proud team member. Yeah, I I just find it more interesting to watch him because he's just taking all the L's right now and having to figure out what to do. And he's just not really doing a great job at finding a position to get back into. Yeah, I really felt bad for him specifically when he lost Chelsea, because I think that those two had become victims of Missy's insanity and they were playing together to try to combat that. But Tommy's just so one-sided, so, I don't know what you would call it, he's got his blinders on because he's looking purely at these former tribes and the disloyalty of Missy, and it's like, dude, the mer- this is, uh, move past that, you know, we know Missy's a train wreck, play against that, but look out for your own game, not Miumbo. Miumbo's dead. Mm-hmm. Imagine half of this merged tribe seeing the game beyond Miumbo and Neri. I think there's a whole bunch of people that even right now at 13 are still like, oh, well, I don't want to lose an original Nieri member. I don't want to lose an original Miambo member. And I'm like, in every game I've ever played, like the most important bonds happen on your swap tribe. The people who embrace it and move forward with that swapped group are normally the people who find the most success. So I just I don't understand well, the obsession with the people that you met in the first 24 hours of the game. Well, I think we're going to see that with the new Peroto and the new Nairi douche bros. You know, I mean, those are cross tribal alliances that were made in the swap. And I think that those are the most solid alliances right now. I think, unfortunately, I think Peroto is going to be the least successful of those two. Uh, I, I wish they were more successful. Maybe after John's gone and his target's gone, they can kind of cobble together something. But in terms of Tommy, you know, right now he's really, his entire game is dependent on his relationship with Missy. And I think he's still not able to let that go in order to make some good moves for him. Yeah, I think if we're continuing the fair comparison, Tommy would be Rocky, the person whose chances of winning are largely tied to their ability to be the last one out in a pagong. Yeah, and even then, you know, Tommy, if he wins, it'll be because he's so likable, not because of the game he played. I'm assuming. Um, I could be wrong. It'll depend on what happens in the interim. He'd need to be sitting there with two absolutely terrible players to win, in my opinion. But, you know, we're looking at these people like Jack and Tommy and assuming they're going to be around for the long haul because they're non-threatening and um, nice. So if they're towards the end, I don't know if they have the uh, resume to win. Um, I just want to make one disclaimer before we move on to the next person. Tommy, when you listen to this back, I just want to I just want to make it very clear. Most of my dislike for you comes be- slowly because of your rep. I do not like Tommy <laughs> at all. Well, I think it's an important distinction. I'm glad you brought that up because I think a lot of people listening, including the pre-jury who have listened to our previous podcasts, you guys got to understand we're just commenting as spectators. We would love to get to meet all of you and have... You know, we'll judge you on how you treat us in person, but, you know, certainly we understand this is a game. People act differently in Stranded than they do uh, outside of Stranded. So please don't take any of this super personally. We're all just enjoying watching you put on a good show for us. How's that? That's good, especially since we picked you over like 40 other people that we actually didn't like. So... (laughs) Yeah, that was I, your compliment. Now yeah. we get to be mean to you. Yeah. Now, now we're going to go back into roasting the shit out of you. But <laughs> yeah, you were chosen out of like a pool of 70 or 80 this season. So, you know, you were interesting enough to get to this point. So we're invested and that's why we care so much. 
Let's move on to, we already talked about Chelsea in the pre-swap, so let's move to Carl. Carl's someone who is an unexpected favorite. I think he's playing super aggressively. I don't know if he's playing the best game, but I'm here for it because he's playing full tilt. I mean... He's definitely playing a game. Yeah, he's got an idol. <laughs> he's he's in with the douche bros. I'm interested to see, is he leading the douche bros or is that Dean? Yes. It is 100% Carl. Dean thinks he's a little more in control, so does Aaron, but it's Carl. Carl's the one calling all the shots. Their entire game plan to get out Peroto members is from Carl. Like Carl, I see as a Nate. I really see him in that position this season, so I foresee him going Final Six at Faroe Islands. Uh, six and Pharaoh. Yeah, this uh, Jack Daniels is finally kicking in, so forgive me. Either way, I blame you for not pulling Rebecca. I would have won otherwise. Um, I did pull Rebecca just, you know, late. I like him. He's cool. Carl, I expected not much from Carl. I kind of casted him because Levita was so gung-ho about Carl, um, and that kind of boosted him amongst the uh, maybe pile, as we'll call it. The nerds. I'm so glad I cast him. You know, we've we've discovered that if someone has a strong feeling about someone in casting, usually it's for a good reason. You know, we saw that last season with Kristen uh, in Isolated for Nofo. Uh, we saw that with Eric with me, and now we've seen that with Carl for Levita. Carl's delivered beyond what I expected. I really thought he was going to be a boring uh, nobody, and he is really delved into the game more than I think anyone else this season, um, strategically. So Carl, I think, is going to be in the driver's seat. I foresee him going around the Nate boot um, around Final Six, uh, just because he'll be a biggest target of the people that are left over at that point. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely an endgame player. I think everybody will see his endgame threat and try to take him out before that happens. Yeah, he needs to team up with a Missy or a, or a John oh, or just someone who's too big of a character to take out over Carl. That will not Could happen. imagine Carl spending the entire pre-merge being like, we need to target John, we need to target John, and then working with John. It's never going to happen. Next level, level strat. strat. Next level strat. <laughs> it's not going to happen. 40 chests. Let, let's let Nofo talk. What do you have to say, Nofo? He benefits from being the most likable of the assholes. And I think yeah. he has the most potential to win. Um, if I was going to make a winner pick now, it would be for Carl. Well, that's a hot take. I think Carl, for me, is someone who he'll be ahead of strategy in that I think he'll outlast people like Aaron, who's going to fuck up his game before him, and he'll outlast people like John. But I think once he's left over as one of the big strategists, I, I see him going final six, final five as a big threat at that point because he's made too many good moves. Um, yeah. Hopefully that's not the case. I would love to see Carl win. I think he's played a phenomenal game. He was going into the merge, probably like my top contender. I see him like that Neary Bros Alliance. I kind of just my gut is telling me they're going to run the merge at least for a while. And he is, I think, the best positioned. He has the best relationship across the board, but he also has the most pull with people outside of their alliance, in my opinion. I mean, John and Kara and Allison still want to work with him because they don't suspect he flipped. Dan is linked to him. Like, I just think he has too many options. Like, who's going to be able to get the votes to take him out unless it's an idle play? And he has an idol in his own pocket. Like, I just... I see him making a deep run. I'd love to see him win, even though he annoys the shit out of me because his strategy is targeting all the people that I like, you know? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, he kind of annoys me because he keeps getting out people I like. So that's why I ranked him pretty low compared to everybody else. But yeah, that's just Yeah, me. I mean, that strategy is going to catch up to him. As we know, we see this season after season, the interesting people go and then we're left in the swap with the boring people who become goats. Um, and everyone thinks they're the goat herder, but only one person can be. I don't know... I mean, hopefully that doesn't happen, but do we think Carl is the leftover of the douche bros? Like, is he the one that's going to be the last one of those guys? And do we think that the douche bros will stick together all season? I think it depends on what happens with a Dan boot, because currently Dean and Aaron are already planning on turning on Dan, who Carl is very close with. And I think that should they try and blindside Dan and therefore blindside Carl, I think that that'll be the thing that shatters the douche bros. I think it depends on how far Kara and Allison go, because mm. I think if they make it far enough, then Dean has it locked down and mm. he's going to be the last one. 
That's a good call. Because, you know, it is going to depend on if these guys turn on each other. And right now, Dean has pretty good options. So if he wants to turn on them, he's got Alice and he's got Kara that he could flip to. Please don't let that happen. Oh, I think it would be great. But let's talk about... No, I, I just mean Dean. I don't want Dean to be the last one standing. Oh, Dean would be great. I don't know. I'm the number you know. one Dean hater. I, I like well, Dean. Sorry, I no, he's Karen. Great. Karen's the number one Dean hater. Well, I need Dean to, to win so I can have a, you know, a two-time psychic badge. <laughs> right. Um, and you stole my pick. But anyway, I digress. Uh, let's move on to the next pick. We'll all have something to say about this. Missy coming in sixth place. I don't know. I'm drunk. I think it's sixth place. Fuck Missy. Fuck Missy. There is a hashtag <laughs> fuck Missy going. Missy's going to get so much hate. I have to say, we have to stand. I mean, I know <laughs> she's got she's got the ream boost and she's got the pleasure of having lurked isolated and studied up and she's got more of an advantage of anyone going in. All that said, the bitch has been fucking wild. <laughs> We have to stand, Missy. I mean, come on. I know it's controversial. I know she's made some controversial decisions, but uh, come on. This she's she's top. She's top. So the the, the like reason her. that she's such a great character is because like everybody, and you've seen this with Aaron multiple times and with Dean. They're trying to guess what's going on on the other tribes, and they're the last thing that they can think of is Missy flipping to save Angelina because it makes no logical sense for her game like why would you flip and save somebody that you just met when you're flipped with people who are all in an alliance together from the previous previous tribe like it just doesn't make sense but that's what she did like she's the person that you can't plan around because you never know mm -hmm. what she's gonna do and that ruins game bots games which is why they all hate her and why it's so funny to watch her play i have strong feelings about her taking out elizabeth because i love elizabeth but like you can't deny that watching everybody else panic after that wasn't hilarious yeah well, a hater or not missy's the one who's made the season so far yeah if we're making cover missy's near the center let's put it that way i'm taking the cover there though because you have so <laughs> many characters oh it's so good uh, this season is great i really did not expect the season because usually we come in with a standout few you know like last season we had reem and Susie and I mean, last season was fantastic too, but this season it's like everyone is delivering equally, so it's super hard to pinpoint who's the standout because everyone is great, and that's really where we want to be. Yeah, there's a solid ten people who can make cover right now. Yeah, uh, but Missy, uh, it's definitely going to be a seven-person cover. Let's put it that way. But Missy is one of the all-time stranded icons. Like if we're looking at this season as a whole, we're going to look at Missy, Lauren. And probably like John as our top three ultimate standouts of the season. Dean. So uh, it's hard, man, because you would throw Dean, you'd throw Dan in there just as huge characters. But, you know, Missy, her reputation is tainted because of the Elizabeth boot. And we know that that has some outside of game influence. So that's hard for us to um, justify. But now that it's already happened and the merge has happened, I mean, she played two idols. She's really aggressive and insane. And we love that. I mean, we haven't had that in a while in Stranded because we've had real personalities dealing with real drama. But Missy is a throwback to the days of when people listening, you guys won't have any idea what I'm talking about, but a throwback to Scout and Gretchen and Teresa and some of our insane players that used to just play the game super hard and fuck the consequences. This is what I'm going to play because I'm I'm in it. And that's Missy. And she's really revived that spirit of Stranded that's been missing for a while. And we'll get to the other half of that equation. But a few people this season have revived that. So I really feel like, you know, this season we've combined the new school in that we have these amazing casts like we've never had before. I think our casting process is um, so far beyond what it used to be that we have these solid players that we want to watch. And they've combined that with the insanity of the early seasons. And it's just... Oh, it's so good. I mean, I'm just going to say, even if you remove the flip by Missy to take out Elizabeth, you still have her selling Tommy fake idol clues. You have her mm -hmm. solving both idol clues on Miambo. You have her playing both idols for Angelina to take out Chelsea, who was her number one ally for the first four or five rounds of the game. Well, like, like two days before. <laughs> right. Like it's even without that one vote. She is still being 
more wild than anybody else in the game. Like she just, you know, if it 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 just wasn't for her being (laughs) a little bit too much at times, I think she would be much higher on the. But you know, I think the timing wasn't right. I think is what it was. Oh, nothing's right about what she's doing. It's all wrong. (laughs) We love it. I mean, I mean, look. When we play these games, we're living, we're playing an alias and we're tapping into a side of ourselves that's maybe something that we have inside of us, but we're afraid to bring out in our real lives. And Missy to me is that player that we all wish we could just, uh, you know, we could just throw, we just say fuck it and throw all of our wild ambitions to the wind. We could play an idol on someone who's in danger despite not having a backup. Just play balls to the wall. And she has done that. So, I have to give her a fuck ton of credit. She's going to piss off so many people. She already has. The jury has a hashtag fuck Missy going on. And by the end of the season, I can't imagine that that's not going to grow. But at the end of the day, like she has played a game that most people claim that they'll play and very few people do. She's going to be looked at this season as, uh, I think, a legendary performance. I love Missy. I think she just doesn't give a fuck. And I love that. Hopefully when joins the server she still sticks to yeah i voted out elizabeth cry about it because that would be oh she definitely will to see i hope so yeah <laughs> missy and elizabeth are not going to be friends let's let's be honest <laughs> does she have any idea that she's an act of does she have any idea how she comes across that's what i want to know that's what i'm wondering too like i, I don't, don't see a, that much self-awareness in it i don't think she cares I think in order to play like that, you have to not give a fuck, right? Like if you really she's aware. I just want to know if she even has any idea that she looks like this. Uh I think she knows. I think she doesn't give a fuck. That's how I feel. I feel like she is just playing. She's probably been told. We said this a a little bit in the last podcast, but Missy is playing a hundred miles an hour and everyone else is just catching up. That's how she's gonna make it. F- I think the only 11. issue with the way she's playing 100 miles per hour is she's currently driving off of a cliff instead of on a road. Totally. Oh, no, totally. Because she- <laughs> there's a way to play balls to the walls without giving a fuck in a way that, like, will help you. And she, totally. I think, is doing oh, absolutely oh, everything she can to hurt her game in the way she's doing it. Uh, let me be perfectly clear. Missy is not winning this game. I will eat my words if she does. I will stand a million percent if she does. but. I think Missy is just playing so hard, so fast, people can't catch up to her. Eventually, it will catch up. I said this yesterday. I think, you know, she's playing so far ahead of people that it's taking them a while to catch up to her game. You know, they weren't expecting an idol to be played. They're not expecting these big, outrageous moves of flipping on people and and everything else. But once they do catch up to it, it's going to be her ass. That being said, it's so fun to watch. And it is a way to guarantee yourself final nine and a spot on the cover. Um, It's just, you know, it's not a winning game, but it's a good way to make it very far. A season where Missy wins is the best season of Stranded. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to happen, but it's not the best season of Stranded. I'd be really annoyed. The season where Missy makes the final three thinking that she's going to win the game and then just gets absolutely eviscerated a la Ziggy in Stranded in Morocco. That's the best season of Stranded, especially if she loses to somebody like a Lauren. Then it would be the best season. Oh, Lauren winning is also the best strategy of the season. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, I would take either of those. Uh, but no, I mean, I, Missy winning is implausible to me. It would be amazing and it would be incredible. I, I hate to say it would be, you know, it's like Russell Hance winning Samoa. You know, it's he he played so far, so hard, so quickly that it's unfathomable that he could win. We'll see. I, I, if Missy makes final three, this is the best season of Stranded. Like, let's just put that on paper. I don't think it happens. I think she goes, you know, final nine, something like that. She could go on Sunday. Yeah. Based on how now. conversations are going. That would not shock me. What would shock me is her making it very far. If Missy's here next week, it's great. <laughs> Let's talk about Allison next on the list. We can't talk about Allison without talking about Dean because they have the cringiest showmance of all time. (laughs) But it's absolutely enthralling. And I love that they're unapologetic about it, too. Right. Like I I warned Allison today, like, hey, you you know, lurkers can see everything. you're typing. I mean, I don't know how to say that without telling her, like, girl, you, you might be embarrassed about this. But she was like. No, fuck it. I, I assume they could see me and I don't care. And I, I love that. 
And she was like, do I need to back down at all? <laughs> like, yeah, we're like, She no. was worried you were reprimanding her somehow. And you're like, no, 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 go for it. Just know it's recorded. <laughs> yeah. No, we're all... Let's let our resident um, showman's expert, Hannah and Tim, cover this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> where was the one that we found yesterday Deflect. in the le- live feed updates i <laughs> no it's not deflecting i'm just um, <laughs> I, love that you can hear her I was going to offer to role play as dean i can literally hear her cheeks turning red what, do, you, do you want to be pounded like an alarm clock oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Allison, this is like the last thing I expected out of her too after the first half of the game. Like this is the same girl that in the last week has just been like having the most wholesome chats with the potato tribe. Like her and Jack, her and John, her and Kara, like their talks are just great. And then on top of that, her relationship with Christian was so wholesome. So to have her come to the merge and all of a sudden just be like smut, like straight smut with Dean is so hilarious. Yeah. It's also like an interesting contrast with the similar situation last season with Annie and uh, Winston, where it's like it's Winston and Annie, the porno. Yeah. And Winston was also not actively egging it on. <laughs> I, just, I think it's so funny. I just, I don't know how they're going to react afterwards. It was just so fast. It was as fast as Kelsey and Frank. I had to refill my drink for this combo. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> realistically, what we should have seen. Oh my god, the Dane confessional is also fantastic. I love it. I don't, she doesn't know he's gay, and he is playing into it for strategy. I assume he's having. He's he's a little too convincing, though. Like he has to be. He's getting off a little bit on this, right? Yeah. He's probably just having fun. I mean, like, there's there's a point too where you're like, this is so ridiculous that I may as well just lean into it and like make it hilarious. Like, I'm sure that's where Dean is with it. It's amazing. We love watching it. I think that these two are. Allison has become super interesting because of it, but also I just saw. Yeah, it. I, I don't know where to go after that. Um, <laughs> what was her percentage of the fan favorite the first week compared to this week? Like, what percentile was she in? She was at fifty one percent. Now she's about sixty seven percent. So she's gone up twenty percent in the. Um, fan favorite yeah, point. I was going to say, I think this is really helping it out for her. I think it's making her more relatable and rootable because I think for a while she was just kind of like the sidekick to Allison and then to Jessica, er, not yeah. to, Allison, to Jessica. And then she was kind of overshadowed by John and Kara on Peroto. And I think this is finally giving her her moment, which is, <laughs> you know, maybe not the moment everybody wants for themselves in Stranded, <laughs> but. Get what's yours, Allison. We appreciate a sex positive environment. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love that she also was like, yes, let's all get more flirty in the uh, tree mail that I posted or something. <laughs> it's like, all right, that's, that's the last thing you need, girl. But I love a little it. I mean, foreshadowing to this, sorry. A little foreshadowing to this was in the last challenge. Dean made a 69 joke and Allison was like, ooh, a kinky joke. That's amazing. And that was the yeah. foreshadowing before this happened. <laughs> I just see her as like the boozy Mrs. Roper of the season. I, she's going to kill me for that. I, that was unfair. <laughs> Who's Mrs. Roper? <laughs> Who's Mrs. Roper at Three's Company? Come on. I'm sorry, um, I'm not 40. Yeah. Uh, Fuck you. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Allison, I think you're right, Danny. Like she, you know, going into the swap, she only really had her bitchy alliance with Jessica. Like that was all we had to go off of for Allison. But since the swap, she's teamed up with these guys, Kara and John, that are really rootable. And so she is rootable by proxy of, of those guys. So she has like this devious undertone to her where we know she's more like a Jessica, but I think she's really likable lately. And I love that she was sticking up for Christian during that tribal council. She was the only one who was like, I can't get rid of Christian. I I love the guy. So I really think, you know, if let's say John goes, Kara and Allison are going to carry our underdog rootability status, I think. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how strategic and you know involved allison will be moving forward Mm -hmm. i think that she's a good loyal soldier for an alliance i wonder if she's gonna have the autonomy to go on and 
like make moves if say John or Kara gets cut here pretty early in the merge. I wonder if she's going to have the autonomy to be able to play a game and make it to the end. But she is somebody that I would love to see make a deep run if only for the dirty conversations, but more so because I think that she'd be a fun person to watch make it deep. Yeah. I agree with everything Danny said. Yeah, she's an interesting piece in a lot of people's games, but she also has the Jessica downside where she can't just flip for no reason. Right. It's also free porn. Uh, no foe. Uh, bad, bad no foe. No, I'm, I'm no, kidding. it is. I think, you know, all the lurkers are <laughs> like laughing at it. And then we we're like, you know what? Go girl. And then they're all like, let's get Christian to read it <laughs> in French. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I thought that was funny. But let's talk about Dean now because we can kind of talk about them together since they were both flirt man's partners. Dean, he's he's in our top four for a fan favorite. I think. Uh, deservingly, I think, you know, he, he definitely plays a little fan service, but you really get the sense that this guy's loving Stranded. Like, I, I get the sense that he's eating, sleeping, breathing Stranded during this time, uh, similar to how Reem was in Curl Islands. And that's kind of how I see his game going, too. Right now, he's involved with Allison. I want, you know, he's involved with the Douche Bros. I wonder if Allison is going to play a key role in Dean uh, flipping the game on its head or even turning on the Douche Bros. What do we think? I don't think he's going to turn on the douche bros. Oh, love. Same idea. <laughs> I think no, he's not turning on the douche wrong. bros. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong people on the podcast to say that too. <laughs> you know, with so much love going around stranded, it's hard to, to decide who's, who's showmancing who. When do I get to be on a tribe with nine single gay men? When's that? Happening? But back to Dean. Anyways, Dean is not flipping on the douche bros. I think... <laughs> <laughs> Dean's best case scenario here is that the douche bros take control and target the original Neary people of John and Kara. And then once they get rid of those two, he wants to turn on Dan, who's another person that he's not connected to at all, other than a loose connection with Carl. And I think that Dean's ideal situation then is to take out Carl. And then he's left with all of those original Miambo people that he likes, like Jack, like mm-hmm. Tommy like Aaron. Those are the people he wants to go to the end of the game with. He'll use Allison if he can, but he doesn't view her as an ally at all. Like he wants his Miambo people at the end because those are the people he trusts the most. Like on paper, it looks like Dean is doing a lot, but really he's like one of the hardest, like OG tribe strong. Oh, people. Yeah. Yeah. In his latest confessional, he even said like, he's not even super keen on the idea of targeting Missy. Because she's an OG Miombo, even though she has absolutely no interest in working with him. She's even called him a head honcho to other people. Like, she sh- wants to target him, and he doesn't want to get rid of her because OG tribe lines. So, uh, I think he's he's a very rigid player, even though he's well, so cracked. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little unfair to Dean, because I think most people... You know, we see it every season. I think people naturally, they bond up with people who are like them. And when we put them on a tribe and we give them a mascot and that's who they meet when they first start, you're clinging to anything you can in a game where you're all alone. So it makes sense. And and we'll see it season after season. Like there's no getting around it. People automatically drift back to their original tribes. No matter what we do, early swap, late swap, doesn't matter. Dean, I think you guys are, I think you're being a little unfair to Dean. I think... Dean, in the right circumstance, will clue in. That being said, he's very clueless at the current <laughs> moment when it comes to all of these different alliances and what he can do. I'm wondering if, you know, chips fall, maybe somebody in his douche bro alliances get, gets blindsided. Maybe Dean starts to warm to the idea of Allison telling him some of the insider information. I think he has a chance of winning, like a pretty decent chance, especially if he makes it to the end. He just needs to be a little more flexible. Oh, I definitely agree that he stands a chance of winning. I just think the path where Dean makes it to the end and wins is not a very fun path for us to watch. I think that if Dean wins, it's going to be like a a plow through the merge by the douche bros. And then he's going to be the one that kind of comes out on top with a couple immunity wins or something near the end and is able to cut carl and nick like i don't i just don't think that anyone in that alliance winning is going to wind up with a fun back and forth in the merge i think it's going to turn into 
a steamroll, which is why I'm actively rooting against them, even though I see that they're in the best position and stand a very good chance of being at the end. I don't see a steamroll. Nofo, do you think there's going to be a douche bro final four? Um, sadly, yes. Okay. Uh, I mean, look, it's going to be um, 38th in my 37 season ranking. <laughs> I ha- I have to say, <laughs> the Douche Bros being a Final Four is an incredibly strong Final Four. And for that reason, I don't think they're all going to stick together that long. I think there's too many big threats in that, namely Carl and Dean. I think around... I think around eight or nine, they start. Yeah, and I'm not saying other. that it's a bad thing if they stick together and go to the end. That's just if that's the way the strategy plays out this season. That's it is, it is what it is. Thing. I'm just it like, I'm like inherently like I root against whatever like looks like it's going to happen. Or I'm like, no, I don't want them to go far. Of course, like, you always root against. Go far, so I don't want them. You always root for the underdog, you know. Especially after Big Brother 22. God, <laughs> fuck that. Uh, but do you think? <laughs> does anyone genuinely think? Next week, all four douche brothers are in. Oh, yes. update on Big Brother. Cody won veto. Oh, I don't care. I stopped watching I was after say, Janelle left. You know, <laughs> this season has been delivering far beyond Big Brother, so uh, I have no desire to watch Big Brother. That being <laughs> said, I, I think last that Merge Tribal Council is one of the most entertaining nights I've experienced in Stranded. Um, and that's over 13 years of gaming. Let's move on to Kara. Just eking out Dean on this placement. I think Kara, Kara's just super lovable, and she's playing the game really well, I think. I think she's playing better than John. I think she's playing better than Allison on her tribe. I don't know how far she can make it, because I think that the Peroto people are going to be the underdogs here, and usually an underdog towards the end of the game is too big of a threat to keep around. But of the Peroto people, I think she's playing the best. And that I agree. That goes beyond John. Um, I think, I think so. she's learned a lot. Even now, she's like, I got to cut John because he's too likable. And um, I got to start playing my game to make my case for the win. And I just think she has such a good head on her shoulders that she's going to be a real force towards the end of the game. You know, I think she, around Final Five, she'll really be a target, if not before then. So that's going to be a struggle for her. But right now, she's positioned really well. I think she's doing a good job as a social strategist. Like, she's not a game bot strategist in terms of looking at all the numbers, making the alliances, but she's making the right connections across the lines she needs to make to make sure, I think, that she won't come up as a target. You originally casted Brittany in Isolated. She went way before we thought she should. What are you viewing? What is is your view of her now in in Stranded uh, now that she's made the merge? I'm very proud of her, and I think she I think she's proving that she's what we saw in her from the beginning of isolated. It was just, you know, she just, I don't think she was quite ready at that point. So like her activity level wasn't where it is now. I think if we were to throw her into isolated now, she probably would dominate. I think she's, Hmm. I think she's a really good player and I um, am very excited to see how she'll go going forward. But I think she's an all-star for sure. Yeah, she's super lovable, especially being part of that Peroto tribe. I can't stress enough the storyline of the season with Peroto, John, Allison, Jack. I think it's, you know, they're definitely who we're rooting for. And so I, I really want to see that play out through the rest of the merge, not just like Peroto all going back to back. That would he be so boring. Is proving the idea that we've had for a while now that going from isolated to stranded or vice versa, it really is an advantage. Of course. And I love that we chose, you know, we saw it with Ziggy. I think Ziggy was an exception to the rule. But even like Elizabeth and Kara this season are killing it. Uh, I think when you go out early and you get a taste of what it is to play Isolated or Stranded, this heightened version of these games, these online games, you really get a sense of what you could have done differently and you have that regret. And so when you go right back into another season, you're really giving it your all. And that's what we're seeing from Kara. And we love to see that. I personally, I mean, I think we're all, we all have a sense of pride because we talked to Brittany at length last season where she was watching the people in her cast do well, where she was screwed early, frankly. And so now that we're here in ice and stranded and she's made the merge, you know, I, I don't know how well she'll do, but 
so far she's done well for herself and I, I can't be more excited for her and happy that she's gotten this opportunity. I also love that now that she has been a part of the Stranded community, been around for a little bit, that she's taken it upon herself to have lit confessionals because Kara's yeah. Corner has been an absolute joy for the last Shout couple out weeks. Kara's Corner. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't even like Taylor Swift, and I love Kara's Corner, so, you How know. dare you? How dare you? First of all. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, you know, I've done this for so long, and I've introduced so many people to gaming, and I think this season, too, we have a lot of the pre-merge that we just talked to, uh, pre-jury, that have that same feeling of, like, man, I really just want to play again. I want to prove that I can be good. And, you know, I think Kara and even Elizabeth, I think, are the proof that uh, apply again. We know how much you want it when you do want it, and usually it delivers on the second go around if you do end up flopping on your first. We know that this is like a new territory for a lot of people, and sometimes people deliver on their first go around, sometimes it takes a few times. Kara and Elizabeth, I think this season, were proof in the pudding that if you want it bad enough, you can succeed very well. Just study up, stick around with us. I know we're a crazy bunch, but hang in there and you'll get your shot, you know? Oh, for sure. Okay, let's move on to Lauren, my personal yes. favorite. We have yes. to stand. Yes. A very rare casting. I think Tim and myself have referred to her as the female version of myself. That is 100% true. Nofo even joked about that famously in like our second podcast. I wish, I wish we would have cast her as Nora. Yes, that's the only regret. Although, I mean, she's iconic now. Now Lauren is iconic yeah. and stranded. Like, she is sure. one of those people. She's outrank Missy here. Uh, I think a lot of people rank Missy low because of the blind side of Elizabeth. But even still, I think Lauren is such a rare, mm -hmm. uninhibited player. It's a miracle she's gotten as far as she has. But that just kind of shows she does have some strategy chops. that She's hiding behind this personality, uh, much like myself. And we stand a million percent like Lauren is a one in a million find that we will be so lucky to get every few seasons or so. Lauren's it. I gotta point out the fan favorite uh, percentage in the first week. Her percentage was 35 percent and now it's 85 percent. Jumped up 50 percent because she's really transformed after the. Well, First I remember week, yeah. she's awesome. it was the when we bite. were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember when we were going through our interview, and all of us were kind of like, "I don't know if I learned anything from that interview." She's still just this huge question mark, and we're like, "Okay, she's either going to go like be a really, really good cast or a really, really big flop," and she has not disappointed us. And you know what? You wouldn't have even cast her if I hadn't made her yell at me. Yeah. No. And, you know, it, it really throws a monkey wrench in our casting plans, because I think with women in particular, it's hard to find those women that are very strong personalities, which we love. But even like, you know, Stephanie, I think of Jessica, I think of Lauren, these these women that um, when we interview them, they're very assured of themselves. They know that they're going to do well, but they're. Not, they don't they don't show it you know in the interview because they're like uh, i'm gonna be good and you're like all right well show that to us and they don't show us i think they're so self-assured that they don't need to show us they assume that we'll cast them so yeah i i, I agree i'm gonna i'm gonna loud cap you nofo um you made a comment i think you didn't want to be said but you said i don't know if i believe lauren is a woman i don't know if i believe that either she's almost like a Mia or someone that might be sneaking back into stranded like I, I've IP checked believe me but she's so much of our personality so ingrained in our uh, DNA of stranded that I don't I can't believe she's a new player it has happened before Levita was someone who we IP checked we thought for sure she was someone who's sneaking back into the stranded and it wasn't the case very so. different from Lauren <laughs> <laughs> yeah not exactly the what Lauren you mean? Levita's exactly the same as Lauren <laughs> <laughs> yeah, say, yeah, Lavita, you were uh, you didn't know it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, I think Lauren is so much the strain of personality. I can't believe she's not Mia or someone from our. I compared her to Brooke from <laughs> Ostranded. So uh, Jensa, Tiffany from yeah, ISO. Totally. Like, yeah, I see that. And the way I that I that saw it. Yeah, we talked about it when we were talking about Angelina that Lauren during that tribal council was just so in your face. She threw out who she was voting for. She was calling people out without whispering because she thinks whispering is stupid. But then she has the classic 
Tiffany Brooke move, which is, hey, I'm so sorry I had to do that. But like, I just I needed to get the target off myself. I remember when Nofo and I went to that joint tribal council with Brooke in Ostranded, like she was fucking crazy. She was throwing out everybody's name and we both wound up wasting pre-merge idols because we were like, fuck it. Like she threw out our name. We're going to die. And then immediately after I swap with her, she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I had to do that. But like I heard my name, so I just didn't want to go home. Like there's just like that old school gamer mentality of yes. like yes. be a complete asshole. But then like, you know, go up to them afterwards and be like, sorry about that. Like I still actually want to work with you. And I see that a lot in Lauren. And, oh, she and does exactly that thing. I'm I'm a little tipsy, so forgive me if I go off on a tangent, but Lauren very much is myself and Tiffany and those old school sucksters, very much like Lucy, who hits the fuck it button at Tribal and it works. Like you can't describe it. I think it only comes from experience where you know how far to push it and just what to say, and like it's outrageous and it shouldn't work, but it fucking does. And She's just amazing. Like, I, I can't stress enough. She's exactly how I play the game. She shouldn't be as strategic as she is, but she is. So you know that there's some experience behind that. She says she's from F FGC, which um, Naoka was even like, I probably know her. Naoka is another person who's like, kind of like that. Um, it's this old school, very savage, uh, over the top personality that does have strategy behind it. It's hard to find, but like they've played so many games that they're just having fun with uh the game in general putting their full personality into it and that kind of distracts away from the game i think nofo you pointed that out uh being similar to how i played right um i think she really needs to lay on the strategy if she wants to have a chance right now it's just you know a, it's like 75 percent bitch <laughs> well i think it's yeah. a timing thing too like she can she can get away with being like this for a few more rounds before she really needs to turn up a strategy because she's got that public idol she can use as a threat she's got people basically scared of her <laughs> <laughs> but not in a way where they necessarily want to vote her out right now so i oh, think she's... she could ride that a little bit She's ahead of the curve, I think, for sure. Mm -hmm. She's like, she's she's in that messy territory of freaking people out to the point where they would never make those bold moves. And when you're playing against new people, that's uh, alarming to them. So when I played, I used it as a distraction. Like in per in public, I was off the charts insane. And I knew that. But in private, I was very strategic, overly thinking to the point where people trusted me. And they knew when I was saying something in public, it was like, hey, you know what I'm saying in public. You know where I'm going. This is my this is my target. You don't have to worry because you're not my target list. Um, and I think that Lauren even said something like that. Um, mm -hmm. so, so she is pretty clued in. Like, she's not a total wild card that she would like you to think. So I think people like it's hilarious to see someone like Aaron get totally freaked out by a player like that. My dream scenario is just every round we get Lauren gets her closer and closer to people dragging her to the end thinking that she's a goat and yes. then just having her yes. like at the end being like all of you fell from like stupid like dumbass tactics like that's the dream yes and, and it's not that unfeasible that's how i won no folk can tell you crash course that's how i won twice right. people just dis disregard someone who acts insane in in public you know and, and really she she's played a lot of games she's from fgc that's like 10 15 years ago you know before stranded so um this is someone who's played a lot yeah, and i think that's the big difference between lauren and missy being in their off charts insanity is i think lauren's has more purpose behind it that's going to work out for her either way even if she goes home <laughs> we have to stand she is a once in a million casting i can't believe we almost passed on her she's proved us wrong and she's amazing so that's why she's number two on our fan favorite let's move on Love to you, lauren <laughs> John, number one, someone who's outseated Lauren and all the other crazies, Missy. John is another old school player who has. Uh, we are in awe of John because he's such a nice guy. We really thought going into the season, John was going to be this shtick. He even said he had this awesome confessional, which I recommend everyone read, where I asked him, you know, hey, how come you're not playing a shtick? And he went into. His explanation of like, look, this is a totally different experience than I have ever played. It reminds me of the old school AIM games that even Lucy was from. 
back in like 2004, there were these AIM minis that everyone played. And John is kind of from that era where, you know, he said like, this is super personal to the point where if you even wanted to play a shtick, you couldn't because you'd have to instant message people daily as this other character and it's impossible. So he's like, I've super, he's like, uh, he said, I've enjoyed this experience more than I've enjoyed any other org because it's authentic. He's really gotten to know people and we're seeing him and he's such a nice guy. Like he's known as a troll who plays like these wrestling characters. You specifically wanted John for that reason. Over the top characters that, you know, just troll games and are in it for fun and go pre-merge. And he's become like this super nice guy who, you know, is doing the right thing. He's he's giving up public immunity for his tribe to win immunity, these Peroto underdogs and I mean, it's just made everyone fall in love with him that's lurking the season. He's I'm so at sad. the top of fan favorite and at the top of player rankings, Wait, like on. by a long oh. shot on both of those, which hold really on. shows. Hold on. What, what's his interview name? Uh, Thailand Survivor. That's who, that's who he is. Uh, he comes TS. from Org Universe. Yes, he's TS oh. on, on Org Universe. He's a very old school player. He's played in a million games. I've asked him to play in Stranded for years. He finally had the time to do it luckily and i think he's killing it and he's been like you know what i only play one org a year and i i wanted to play stranded and i think it's just shown i, I think he's an all-star i think he's amazing in this he's a really nice guy i don't think he expected stranded to be how it is but it's super fun watching it and i think he adjusted really quickly yeah i'm so so sad with the way that the douche bros have thrown him out to the sharks here like, uh, I just watch him be like the name that everyone's throwing around as like who they want to target. And by proxy being like, oh, well, if he has an idol, we'll have to target Kara or Allison. Like, that's been like the most disappointing thing of the game to me so far. But at the same time, like he has been probably my favorite person to follow, even though he was on the boring swap tribe where it was just like boots and actives, you know, which I think that may be why. I like him so much because he hasn't made any controversial decisions yet that have pissed me off. But. I mean, does it surprise you at all, though? Because, I mean, he's the he's the typical, like the prototypical merge boot. Like this was going to happen regardless. Yeah, yeah, right. But I feel like like when I would think of like a merge boot, like, you know, Missy would come to mind right now only because she's been such a crazy person for the last two rounds that I would just feel like everybody like get her out of here. Like I don't want to deal with her moving forward, but because some people want to keep her on their original tribe, you know, but I do agree with you. He is a big personality from his tribe. So it's not surprising that people are like, Oh, well, John was playing so well in round two. Let's target him. Holy crap. I went to the bathroom and I'm so drunk. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not drinking a whole lot in coronavirus, but here I am. So, I love John enough enough to say. Um, He's gonna have fun editing this later. <laughs> yeah, even, the, even the pick of John Hedigan for him is perfect. Oh, I love I I think he's amazing. Like, yeah, he, uh, I mean, he brought up that person in the interview. Even we didn't even tell him which seasons we were casting, and he brought up John. You know, what's interesting. We all watch these seasons, and we all kind of have the same opinion of who's the villain. Like, we know Dan is the villain. We know John is a hero, but that's just based on like their personalities and. We all come to the same conclusion. So that just leads me to believe like John is a very awesome person in this particular season. Um, and the way he's playing with the underdogs and, you know, he even like, I don't get this way, but I was like swooning when he was giving up all of his coins to help his tribe that we were all rooting for as like the four underdogs against the other two tribes that were five. Giving Jessica yeah. the idol. Yeah. Like he's just awesome. Like as a, you know, I mean, he's, I hate to say this because this is going to totally rub him the wrong way and everyone else listening, but like he's that Rupert character that is being larger than life, but also extremely likable. And like the audience, you know, the audience is going to root for him and they are. Um, that's John this season. Like he, that's him. He is super lovable. He'll probably go around final nine, uh, if not sooner, but he's played a great game. And I think he deserves that spot on the cover and the title of like person that we're rooting for this season. An un that award person that we're doing for this season. A player of the season award. And unlike Rupert, he actually has strategy. Person, person of, the season. of the season award. That's what you said. Person that we root for. 
person that we were no, for for the season too? award. No, I'm just, I'm just making fun of you. <laughs> That's- Stop! I'm not, I'm not being weird. I'm making fun of you. Why did you say my voice is like I'm trying to have a deeper voice? It's just how my no, voice is. Cootie, something's up with your audio. It has literally been like an octave lower. Yeah, you sound like this. Don't make fun you'll, of you'll hear it when you when you when you edit this. It's, it's kind of died down now, though. Yeah, it's it's so an octave lower. I'm wondering if your mic did a thing where it just like you're turned up me, all its bass input. You're making me self conscious now. No, you sound great, Cootie. You will hear it tomorrow. <laughs> this is all making it into the podcast. We, You're I have to be alpha, alpha to uh, combat Dan's uh, alpha <laughs> <laughs> alpha male status. I have a feeling I'm going to be Dan's only friend on the po- on the forum. <laughs> I'll be his friend uh, if he doesn't talk lit, to me though. the way, same way he talks oh, to me. We the have other to hope people, he does. But... I mean, we have to hope that's really him. I love Dan. I love all these <laughs> yeah. people. They're so good. This is such a great will. season to watch. Such a great season of Stranded. The casting is on point. Do yeah, we the have... worst season this year has been all winners. Yeah, and that was amazing just because it was all winners. F- fuck, who cares who wins? Yeah. Alright, uh, so that was everyone. What do we think of this merge? I, I mean, we just kind of talked about it, but this season is so good. Uh, I thought last season was... Uh, I said it last season, like it was one of our best seasons. This season has followed suit. I can't imagine. I wasn't even excited about this season, but these people delivered so well. Each and every one of them is a star as far as I'm concerned. I can't wait to for them to join us and become friends and community members. I think they're going to be great and they'll love uh, Stranded as a community. Well, what do we think? Well, as we've said, rematch is going to be lit. because these the Rematch will be lit. Other. Well, I think this happens with you every season, Pootie. Like, you go into it really self-conscious, and then all of a sudden, you yeah, know, that's true. You realize how good the cast is, and, like... I think, you know, we, we cast so hard. You know, we now our casting process is so intense, which I love. I, it's one of my favorite parts of the season. I think you guys can attest to that. And I think when we come out of it, you know, we're left with, like, these group that we're assuming will do well, but Every season you get nervous. You're like, will these people show up? Will they be who we expect? And every season we get a surprise of someone we thought would do well and doesn't. And people who we had no idea would do well, Lauren and Jessica, uh, that do very well. um, And we had no idea. And I think that that's the exciting part. And so now our interview process is so intense. We go through so many people that are all interesting that when we get these 20 people, 22 people that... Um, we finally end up with after all this vetting, there's a very good chance that they're a great group of people. So, you know, I want to thank all of you guys, the co-hosts. I'm giving you all special buffs for co-hosting season. I want to thank you guys for helping make. I'm 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 emotional because I'm drunk, but <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys we'll for it. for making like for putting your effort into this and following along and making this series like what I always envisioned it to be. Um, and helping create Aww. a community of people who are like-minded. I think everyone in the community is super cool. I love all, even even the new people that were voted off early, I think are awesome. And I look forward to all these merge people who made the merge. I think they're going to be an awesome part of the community. And I'm just so excited. Um, I look forward to every new season. And I think you guys are a huge part of that. You guys help me cast and plan seasons and execute and um it's everything and more than i expected it to be so thank you you pooty huh? pooty yeah, yeah pooty. thank beautiful. you yeah especially like at least on my end where i really came in after i was laid off at the start of curl and this really gave me people to talk with during a pandemic yeah i think you know we're all looking for that during this pandemic i know i am like i don't see i have uh, i have close friends but i don't see them are uh, nearly as much as I used to because of this pandemic. Mm-hmm. And you guys are really like becoming my close friends and we have fun doing this and we enjoy roasting these new people, but also standing like their successes and failures. And I hope everyone involved understands how special it is. And like, we will be friends with all these people after. So, um, I think it's cool. It's a cool community that we've built and I can't get over. It's, it's beyond what I expected when I started this 15 years ago, 13 years ago. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's end it here while I get schnookered. I think we have an exciting merge. We will catch up again, of course, with these guys as they get booted. 
I don't know how we handle that, but I'd love to get like a jury podcast. That would be cool. As we go on, we'll get more and more individual interviews with them, maybe on some type of podcasts in recording. I wonder Just individual exit interviews. Cool. Well, I wonder if we could figure out something like a round table esque. Oh, that would be thing. awesome. Where like, you know, Dr. Will comes and hosts. Maybe we can get yeah. like I don't know who, but maybe LaVita, you can host. You could you'd be a good Dr. Will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or no foe well, or somebody. If you want to do podcasts, like you really don't need to be worried about their alias after they're voted out and they're on jury. That's my opinion. If you want to do podcasts like now, you can. I don't think it's gonna harm anything. Well, you know, this conversation has come up. I've talked to LaVita and Nofo about it. You know, we we want to grow this into something. We want to grow this into a community <laughs> where everyone enjoys watching, but we also need it to be fair and uh, nobody's cheating to win $100 or whatever, you know, whatever the prize ends up being um, in the future. Is there a prize this season? I didn't, I didn't even know that. And there's always a prize. But I think, you know, as we grow as a community, we'll find hiccups like we did this season with Angelina and Missy that we avoid in the future. I don't think it's obviously hurt this season, but that it is a new thing that's come up as we grow uh, more and more personal. Um, I think as we go forward, though, we'll find new ways to become a larger community through growing pains. And I think it, it, it's a really cool opportunity, though, for us all to uh, grow this into something awesome. And you guys are in, in on, the, on the ground floor up. From this, I'm drunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm rambling. So what you're saying is there's an I Love Rematch 2 coming up. Oh, man. We need to do that. <laughs> it's time. It's been two years. Who's hosting? Oh, man. Well, we'll, we'll always have bad people. Certain people are gone who won't be so bad. We'll always have bad people. It obviously as Kate's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Never mind. I'm we'll always have there. new <laughs> dramas and new problems, growing pains and everything else, but at the end of the day, um, we, all ex- <laughs> we all respect each other as stranded players, survivor fans, and um, the more adult, savage side of online gaming. That's what stranded is. And I think this cast is going to enjoy that. And so far, they have given us so much entertainment. I can't wait. We welcome them to join us. And we look forward to a great finish to an amazing season so far. So thank you, guys. All right, let's all sign out. Bye. Okay, I'm going to go for movie night. Love you all. Bye.